A new study from the University of Texas shows more people are trying out complementary and alternative forms of medicine. Around two decades ago, one-third of Americans used alternative medicine, and now that number has nearly doubled. We're talking about things like yoga, massage, herbal medicine, and meditation. This is a 5,000 year history of alternative medicine. 3,000 BC, eat this root. 100 AD, that is a heathen root, don't eat it, say this prayer. 1300 AD, that prayer is superstition, don't say it, drink this snake oil. That was 1800 AD, sorry. 1900 AD, that snake oil is phony, don't drink it, take this pill. 2006 AD, that pill is artificial, don't take it, eat this root. <laughs> Historically speaking, alternative medicine has always been faced with negative views on the part of allopathic practitioners, leading to an overall distrust of most, if not all, branches of alternative medicine that exists even today. The idea of Christianity as being the superior religion during the Crusades led to a belief that Western thought was the only source of true knowledge. Immigration in the 16th to 18th centuries brought more and more alternative practitioners to the Western world. As conventional medicine was harsh on the human body in the 19th century, some physicians began to question its effectiveness and alternative medicine systems were born. The popularity of alternative medicine increased in the late 20th century as the public's trust in conventional medicine diminished. By the end of the 20th century, provincial governments started creating regulatory bodies for alternative medicine practices. This opened the door for eventual financial compensation, which is the main debate surrounding complementary alternative medicine today. Many complementary and alternative medicines have a strong impact on biological processes of the body and play a crucial role in healing. They include herbalism, chiropractic, acupuncture, massage therapy, meditation, guided imagery, reflexology, homeopathy, progressive relaxation, and many other therapies. In China, a young woman is having open heart surgery. But it's unlike anything you'll see in the West. She's still conscious. Because instead of a general anesthetic, this 21st century surgical team are using a 2,000-year-old method of controlling pain, acupuncture. Acupuncture is an ancient form of Chinese medicine involving the insertion of solid filiform acupuncture needles into the skin at specific points on the body to achieve a therapeutic effect. It's been known to treat fatigue, digestive disorders, depression, infertility, headaches, insomnia, allergies, chronic pain, and lower back pain. Acupressure, which uses the principles of acupuncture but without needles, works by stimulating the autonomic nervous system to inhibit the sympathetic nervous system and activate the parasympathetic nervous system, thus lessening the nausea experienced by cancer patients. There is a disproportionate amount of money put into allopathic practices in comparison to complementary and alternative medicine in Canada. Thus, the wealthy or those with extra health coverage are the majority users of CAM. Canada spent $200.5 billion on health care in 2011. Canadians spent $3.8 billion out of pocket on CAM. In terms of other countries, the USA spent $2.2 trillion on healthcare in 2007 and $33.9 billion on CAM. There is no universal health coverage and the citizens incur these costs. In Taiwan, China, $12 billion was spent on healthcare and $476 million on CAM. There is universal health coverage that covers Western medicine as well as traditional Chinese medicine. Mexico introduced a new nationwide health insurance plan in 2003 that encourages the use of Western medicine and discourages the use of CAM.
the system is funded publicly and is administered on a provincial and territorial basis through taxation from both personal and corporate income taxes. CAM services are not covered within Canada and struggle to be regulated, however chiropractic is partially covered in Manitoba and hypnotherapy in Newfoundland. In European countries, the services covered include the basics of Canada's healthcare system with the addition of dental care, optometry, and prescription drugs. Regulation of acupuncture, homeopathy, naturopathic medicine, chiropractic, and osteopathy services through the government and medical associations have been established. The AM use among three Canadian groups is affected by different beliefs about the purpose of medicine and certain cultural identities. CAM in Canada increases as people abandon the Western model of medicine and take a more proactive role in their health. This also happens as the ethnocultural diversity increases and people are exposed to other cultures' health care practices. Based on Aboriginal people's spiritual values, healers are believed to pass energy from the creator to the patient. Older people use healers less frequently, but this can be explained by the residential school experience, which diminished their Aboriginal identity. Chinese immigrants use traditional Chinese medicine not only to treat illness, but as a way of life. When they live in institutionally complete cities, like Toronto and Vancouver, use will be higher as they have the services and social support that reinforces their Chinese identity. Mm -hmm.